volume five of the Bible story. I got after this book, I got five more to go. We are at part two, story three, Mother's Mysterious Oil Pot. Okay. About this time, one of the sons of the prophets died, leaving a widow to two young boys. The Bible doesn't tell us the boy's name, so I'm sure nobody would mind if I named them Jonas and Joel. So poor was the little family that there wasn't a cent in the house. Worse than that, their father had been heaven had been heavily in debt, and now the collector wanted his money. The mother told the collector she didn't need, couldn't let him have what he claimed. She didn't have it, so he said he would take Jonas and Joel and sell them as slaves to pay the bill. Poor little mother. How sad and frightened she must have been, but what could she do? Where could she turn to for help? Then she thought of Elisha. Leaving her two boys at home, she went in search of the prophet, hoping, again, hoping against hope that he would show her the way out of trouble. At last, she found him and told her story. Tell me, said Elisha kindly, what do you have in the house? Nothing, said the poor woman, poor widow. Nothing that is except a pot of oil. Then Elijah told her to do the strange thing. Go borrow, and it's condensed, so it's going to, when you look at it, it's condensed. When I'm reading it, it's going to sound like it, I skipped, I did Go borrow vessels abroad from thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. He just had noticed, he must have noticed the question, questioning look on the widow's face, for he went on to tell her what to do with the empty oil pot. After she had gathered them, gathered all she could find, she was to shut the door of her house and start pouring oil into them out of her pot. And she was to keep pouring until all the vessels were filled. The widow must have been wondering for a moment whether the man of God was serious. Like, really, are you serious? He knew he had just, she knew she only had one pot of oil. And how could one pot fill so many empty pots? And what would the neighbors think if she started asking them for all their crockery? On the way home, she must have questioned whether or not she should do as Elisha had said. Nobody, liked look, nobody likes to look silly before her, his friends. And this could make her appear very silly indeed if it didn't work. Imagine the kitchen floor covered with empty pot oil pots and nothing happening to them. She decide, decided she would do as she was told and trust Elisha. Jonas, she said, reaching home, please go next door to Mrs. Erickson. Funny name. For a couple of empty oil pots. And Joel, go up go up the road and ask Miss ne Neil Miss Mrs. Naomi for all that she can spare. Why, mother? Never mind, dears. Go and fetch them. Then ask all the other neighbors for every pot that they will let me have. As the boys ran off, they no doubt wondered what was happening to their mother. 
Perhaps the worry of father's death had been too much for her. But they went off for the pots just, as, just the same. Soon they were back carrying all the pots they could. Then they ran off for more. The neighbors looked out their windows, began to wonder what is going on. Why are these boys taking all these oil pots down from down to their house? They asked themselves. When they asked Jonas and Joel, the only answer they got was, Don't know. Mother just wants them for something. When the kitchen floor was just about covered with pots, Mother shut the door. What are we going to do with all them? asked Jonas and Joel, amused. Never mind, just watch and see. Then she picked up her one precious pot of oil in it. With her one precious pot with oil in it. With a prayer in her heart, dear God, make it work. She began to pour. Sorry. Okay, uh, two illustrations. Listen down at the bottom. Her telling one boy to start asking. And then the other of them bringing it home, bringing the pots home. Okay, let's get back to the story. Whew, excuse me. The first pause wasn't too uh, big to worry about, for she just uh, for she was just pouring one to another. But the second, she felt sorry. She felt her pot. It was still heavy, and she looked into it, and there was still oil there. And she began to pour into the second pot. Soon it, too, was filled to the brim. Eagerly, she turned to the third pot, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. Then she lost count. With their eyes popping out, the boys looked on in amazement. But where is it coming from, Mother? I don't know, she cried as she went on pouring. I don't know. Give me a second. Do the same. Row after row of pots were filled. Suddenly she noticed that she had reached to the last pot. Jonas, Joel, she cried. More pots. Get me more. Get me another pot quickly. Then they ran up the street. Knocking excitedly on all the doors. Mother wants more pots. Mother wants more pots. But there were no more pots to be had. And the oil stayed. Leaving the boys to look after the precious oil, Mother ran to Elisha and gasped out, gasped out her wonderful story. She, her heart was overflowing with gratitude to God for his goodness. There must have been a lovely smile on John Elisha's face as he listened. Then he said to her, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children on the rest. God loves doing things like this for those who trust him. Sorry, and it hits my heart right here for a bit. Okay. Uh, store. Uh, there's an illustration. Uh, Russell Harlan, and I might do that. Might do a painting like this. And there's the mom. Or the oil. And the caption reads, With her heart overflowing to God 
for his goodness. The poor widow began pouring the oil in the vessels as Elisha told her, and it continued to flow until every jar was filled. Okay. Uh, sorry. Water work. Uh, that was the end of part three. I mean, part two. Story three. So, this time, the break is uh, legit. Well, it's a two-type type break. So, I'm going to break, and then we'll get our story, go back to our story here in just a second. Uh, give you, give me back in a little bit.